So today's presentation, one of the uh, key drivers for having developing a repository at the library um, is because Ethos has been going from strength to strength. It was launched in 2009, so only nine years ago. It seems to have been around for a lot longer than that. Um, I'm sure everybody in the room knows it's the UK's eThesis online service. Um, ethos.bl.uk if you want to have a dip in while you're looking to check that your own PhD is in there. Um, it, it's, it, we've done as, gone as far as we can really in terms of moving ethos towards um, an open, uh, fully interoperable um, service. It started off as a print digitization and delivery system in 2009 effectively where the very strong focus was on digitizing print theses and um, effectively supplying them through a single central source um, called Ethos at the British Library. Whereas today, um, if it needs to, if it, it wants to stay relevant, it does need to um, embrace the fact that most PhD theses these days are born digital, they are deposited openly, and quite likely, they will consist of more than a simple PDF of a Word document. So there are lots of new and complex um, moves um, in the world of PhD theses. And um, we have got to the stage now where we need an open access repository, effectively, or something looking like a repository, to be able to migrate the ethos service over to um, a more open, interoperable, modern um, look and feel. So um, today I'm going to talk a little bit, quite a bit, about Ethos and where we've got to now and what, the stage, what stage we're at, but also then introduce um, our plans to um, launch a British Library inst uh, Institutional Research Repository and our very, very early plans um, to have a small pilot um, for a shared repository for um, like-minded institutions. So if you would like to know more about Ethos, um, what better place to go than Wikipedia? Uh, this page, this Wikipedia page on Ethos um, is really, really great. It's really comprehensive. There are loads and loads of citations and links out to um, all the different players and stakeholders um, in UK PhD theses. Lots of citations, not only leading back to Ethos records, but your own institutional repository records as well. The best thing for us about it is that we didn't touch it and we weren't involved in its creation. Um, it was born almost overnight by um, a group of uh, wiki, uh, Wikipedians, Wikidata experts, who um, built it and got in touch with us and asked us some various questions about the, the technical setup. Um, and uh, it's really, really great. The, the key organisation or the key group that did that piece of work is called Wiki Love Scientists. Uh, with a lovely red heart in the middle of their Twitter handle. So if anyone knows who Wik Wiki Love Scientists are, then let me know, because they've, they've done a fantastic piece of work. Uh, at the bottom of that page, there's a piece of, um, of some information about citing uh, theses using the Ethos um, URL, the Ethos identifier, to do that. So effectively, there's a, 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 a facility there now where we can automatically cite um, UK theses. So if you know of any famous people who have a Wikipedia page and a UK a doctorate, then let's get them into Wikipedia and let's cite the, the thesis that they produced as part of their PhD. Uh, this is rather timely since we heard yesterday um, of the sad news of Stephen Hawking's um, passing. <laughs> But I just put this in here really uh, to celebrate the fact that in, during Open Access Week last year, Cambridge University, the Office of Scholarly Communication, had the biggest coup ever um, by announcing that they had digitised and put online in the Open Access Repository Stephen Hawking's uh, PhD thesis from 1966. It had already been, I think, the, one of the most heavily requested print items in the, from the library. And um, when the announcement went out that the, um, Cambridge had made their thesis open, the thesis open access in the repository uh, freely downloadable, it took the world literally by storm. And um, I'm sure you all saw it on social media and various other places. I understand that there was almost a million hits in the first couple of days alone, and um, it virtually crashed the, the um, Cambridge repository for a few minutes. Um, so it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Um, in Ethos, it was also our, our Ethos record, which links back to the Cambridge copy. 
um, was also unprecedented in its use, and I think we had 6,000 um, hits on the ethos record alone in the first week. Um, of course, it's an unusual situation, and it's not. I'm not saying that that's a typical use of a, of a UK thesis, but it just goes to show that if we get the story right um, and there's enough interest, you can really um, go to town with celebrating the value, the research value of, of UK theses. So going right back to basics, I thought it would be just useful to give a summary of some statistics around UK theses and what's in ethos. As far as we know, we think there's around about a half a million theses um, that have been produced up to this point. Probably more now because we, the months tick on and more and more are produced every month. But um, at the moment, at this today, we have something like 485,000 records in ethos. So we're very rapidly approaching the half million um, record of ethos. So that will be absolutely fantastic when we get there. And we should, should reach that point by the end of the year. Of the known titles, UK titles, or of the, of the UK thesis that we, we know about, um, this is what it looks like at the moment. So pretty much bang on half of all UK theses now have a digital version available. So that's either born digital or digitised um, under the very many um, digitisation projects that have been going on in the last few years. Um, we think we're missing round about 20,000 titles. Um, for obviously, we don't know those titles, but we know that there are some gaps in the, in the coverage of Ethos uh, metadata records. And it would be amazing to fill those, fill those titles. And we are doing that little bit by little bit where we can. Of the, uh, of the other ones, the red section, um, uh, we think there's around about 220,000 print theses that, as far as we know, don't have a digital copy available yet. In terms of um, date spread, um, I suppose the most notable thing about this slide is that there's been more theses produced, there's been more doctorates um, awarded in the, since 2000 than all of the other previous years put together. And we've seen earlier slides when uh, Michelle um, herself had a, have a, had a slide that demonstrated the uh, increase in higher education um, in the last few decades. Uh, and this, I guess, is just reflected there. I think our old, the oldest title is 1776, um, which is an Edinburgh med medical thesis in Latin. Um, subject, I don't know if you can even read this, and um, it's not particularly interesting, there's no surprises in it, um, but it's useful just to note that we are able to analyse all of the metadata records in ethos um, and give it a subject heading. Um, we've done a piece of work in the past around mapping all the theses that we gather in, all the metadata that we harvest in, has a whole range of subject tags, classification systems or none, JACs, LCSH, DOE, et cetera, et cetera. And through various mappings, um, we've been able to assign a Dewey decimal classification to every um, thesis title. So should we ever be asked to provide all chemistry theses or the data for all chemistry theses, we are able to do that using this data. Um, we do want to do some faceted searching and other, other services, but the, the basic thing is to get the data in there. Lambeth Palace Theses. Who knew that the Archbishop of Canterbury awarded theses? Um, I think at the last count, we've got 145 UK universities, institutions of one form and another, um, listed as participating um, institutions. Lambeth Palace has just been added. Um, and uh, the Lambeth Palace do um, support and award a really small number of um, doctoral theses, doctoral, doctorates, um, doctoral awards. Um, and the awarding body of those theses is actually the Archbishop of Canterbury. So we were quite entertained and really excited to have them as the latest addition to the, to the flock of participating um, organisations. And the reason they wanted to put their records into ethos is not only because we, you know, it's great to have them in there, but because they want to uh, digitise the print, the, their, their older print theses. So the first step was to get the records into ethos and then they're going to get them digitised through the um, ethos digitisation on demand process. Just a little bit about usage. Um, nice chart. Um, just looking at um, October's over the last few years and how e uh, usage has grown. We count usage of UK theses, um, talking about full text um, theses. We add together the ones that are downloaded from Ethos, the ones where users click through to the copies that are held in the university repositories, and added onto that is the uh, small number of digitization orders that come through. 
Um, October 17, obviously October is a high month, but we're seeing the busy months averaging around 70,000 full text views of theses via ethos. Um, we think that's quite an impressive number, but um, it is obviously small fry compared to the huge numbers. I think it was 11 million last year theses, according to the Iris UK um, data. Uh, 11 million theses were downloaded from UK institutional repositories. So they're really, really popular if we count downloads as usage. All of those 69,000 a month, 70,000 a month, 11 million a year, they're virtually all individual downloads by individual researchers doing individual research. But um, what we are seeing more and more of is um, our requests coming to us asking how people can use the data in bulk for um, uh, text and data mining or some sort of analysis across a, a set of data. Um, so I'm just going to whiz through a few of these examples where we've been able to supply mainly metadata to projects, research projects, who, who um, have used it to do some interesting things. So the first one that you may have seen reported, um, the Alzheimer's Society a couple of years ago asked us if we could supply metadata, comprehensive metadata for all um, doctoral theses since 1970 that had um, been focused on the area of dementia related to research. So they gave us a whole range of about 30 um, very, very um, specific search terms dementia and various other um, terms, and we were able to supply that metadata, including abstracts, um, to them, RAND Europe undertook the research, and the, um, the research project was able to demonstrate they took a number of the um, PhD authors and tracked where they, where they started in dementia-related research and where they ended up and where they were now, and they were able to say that 70% um, of um, people who started off doing a PhD research in the area of dementia research um, had left the area completely. Um, uh, and compared to other sorts of similar-ish uh, research, for example, cancer research or stroke research, the drop-off in dementia-related research was much more significant. Um, so we were really happy to support that project. Very similar, uh, just last year, this came out, I think, in November last year, the Society of Immunology used the same process and um, produced a similar report describing and analysing the career, research careers in the, in the field of immunology. Uh, this one is um, a, an academic project between the University of Waikato in New Zealand and Queen Mary University, um, which looks at, um, it produces uh, language learning tools, online language learning tools for uh, students whose first language isn't, isn't English. Um, it's intended to be for um, people who are doing a, a higher level research. So they uh, want lots and lots of content which is valuable at the research level for learning how to, for example, write, write theses or write any um, academic um, writing. So we supplied a number of um, theses, not, not the full text theses, the metadata, and um, they use those to extract um, co-located phrases, regular consistent um, phrases which will help um, students to learn how to write in, in English. Um, yeah, and that's available. You can dip into the Plax website. Just briefly mention this one. I'm aware of the time ticking on. Um, this ethos, uh, the British Library wasn't actually involved in this apart from watching it and um, analysing what they were doing, but um, the B Bristol University and the Royal Society of Chemistry wanted to, they had an idea that there were probably lots and lots of um, undiscovered or unreported chemical compounds in the pages of PhD theses that had never been reported anywhere else. So they ran a project whereby they got a, a load of students to literally crawl, crawl and trawl through either print theses or um, online digital theses um, and copy the, comp the chemical structures and the chemical compounds out of the pages of the PhD theses and to redraw re them into an open access database of compounds called Chem ChemSpider. Um, with a view, I think, to scaling it up to, to become a, an automated project. They found unprecedented numbers of compounds, and it was really interesting to hear how much new material and new ideas and new things were being 
um, reported on in the, in the doctoral thesis, but not necessarily re reported elsewhere in journal articles and things. As far as I know, that project hasn't been pr pursued, and I think one of the main reasons was the uncertainty around doing anything autom automated um, under the terms of text and data mining, where there could possibly be um, commercial services developed as a result of doing that. Um, one of the last things that we're, well, one of the things that we're just about to do is to put the ethos metadata um, minus the abstract out in a, under a CC0 license that will be immediately downloadable, freely downloadable from the British Library website, um, partly prompted by the Wiki, Wikimedia and Wikidata um, activity. They, their policy really is to use CC0 data wherever, CC zero data wherever possible. Um, so that's quite a nice thing to do. So that will be available in the next few weeks. And um, one thing, I've got uh, Catherine's uh, presentation this morning ringing in my ears. But what we'd like to do now is to take very tentative steps towards um, seeing how far we are able to go um, in, with, with the support, obviously, of all the universities in the UK to see if there's any way we can uh, support text and data mining from full text theses within the limits of what we're allowed to do. So there's a, a collaborative PhD um, in the offing with King's College London. The research questions around that will be around um, developing academic genealogies um, and understanding the flow of research ideas between all the different players in that research, re research process, so the student and the, and the supervisor and the academic department and the university, um, other stakeholders. And one of the ways they want to do that is to take um, effectively metadata from the front matter of all of the um, full text theses, so potentially supervisor names, which have never been recorded as metadata, um, um, the po possibly funding bodies, other departments, department names, extract that and use that information to um, do some analysis of uh, the, the, the flow of information. Um, Obviously, we're being the British Library especially and having Ben White on all the committees to the European committees, we need to be very careful, obviously, that, um, not to do anything that uh, is in any way um, uncertain around whether we're allowed to do that. But um, we would like to just take baby steps in that direction. So what next for Ethos? We think we've gone pretty much as far as we can with the current technical system. Um, we'd like to do DOIs for theses, we'd like to do all these things. Preservation of UK theses is something that Ethos effectively has promised and been committed to since the launch of Ethos, that um, we will offer a service whereby the British Library will preserve, have an archive of digital theses um, on behalf of the UK. UK theses are not subject to legal deposit, so we don't get them and we've never had them in print. Um, but it is something that we want to do and we do intend to do um, eventually. Um, so, moving swiftly on, what we would like to do is have a research repository. We will, uh, obviously Ethos is only one of the um, elements to go in there, but um, there's a number of other drivers why, why, why we, we're probably late to the party in, in, setting, in developing a research repository. The British Library is a research organisation in its own right. Um, we are curators and other staff, particularly around conservation and preservation. We um, do a lot of research. Um, we have public funding sometimes. We often do research in, in conjunction with the university. But sometimes we are the lead partner, even so far as having, being a lead partner with AHRC funding, for example. So there are drivers, um, open access mandates, that we need to be aware of and we need to adhere to. But as well, we would like to um, promote the role of the British Library as a research organisation more than we do now, especially in terms of um, sharing the research outputs that we're, that we're involved in. Um, the, our curators and our researchers do have staff profile pages, just like in um, universities. Sometimes the, some of their publications might be listed at the bottom of the, of the staff profile page, but there is nowhere in the library's infrastructure at the moment where we can... Um, consistently share and um, deposit uh, our, British, our own research outputs. And not many of those will be formally published uh, journal articles. Lots of those are conference presentations, book chapters, um, more informal reports, um, study days, lots and lots of different creative um, outputs, blogs, etc. But um, it is something that we want to do. The British Library 
does a lot in research and in supporting research. We have around 30 collaborative PhD students um, with us, working with us and, and universities at any one time. We have a large number of uh, PhD students, project, uh, short-term projects uh, every year. Um, we've got ethos and we do all sorts of other research support, but the one thing that we don't have is a repository um, yet, but we are going to do that. We recently lured um, our first scholarly communications manager, Dimity Flanagan, I don't know if she's in the room, away from higher education. Um, and one of Dimity's roles is to develop an, a deposit policy for our own staff, um, which will encourage, encourage um, a deposit into this wonderful repository that we're going to have. Uh, we don't have the ref as a stick, so we are, we, it will be all about the carrots um, to an extent. Um, and we'll have to see how that goes. Another set of content that will we'll move from its current home, um, effectively on our website, into the repository, is the other data sets that are, are in data.bl.uk. So da this is um, uh, an open space where we have open data sets that are freely downloadable for people to do research and, and um, research in interesting ways. So the ethos metadata, for example, is in there at the moment, although it is only available under a request process, hence our need to make it CC0, um, a CC0 set, which will then be added to data.bl.uk and be immediately available. So these data sets will be going into the repository once we have one. Um, quick shout out to Rachel Kataski, who's leading on the data.bl.uk work, who's doing one of the uh, lightning talks later today. So go, Rachel. Um, another element that's relevant to our repository development work is um, the fact that the British Library is also at the same time um, currently going through a procurement process for a new preservation archive. This is, the, so the Preservation Archive is the, um, the major national archive which um, holds all of our non-print legal deposit collection, digital collections. Um, the current system that we have, which we fondly know as DLS, the Digital Library System, is um, too small, um, uh, um, uh, very complex, and has no longer fit for purpose. So there's a major piece of work going on at the moment to retender for that and to um, up, uh, develop a new preservation archive, which is fond even more fondly known as DAMPS, uh, which is a lovely acronym, Digital Asset Management and Preservation System. So talking about thesis digitization and the link between um, a research repository and preservation, once DAMPS is in place, we all know it as DAMPS, um, we will be able to work with the preservation teams at the library and start to develop, for example, the, um, a preservation service for uh, UK theses. So I mentioned that we're, um, we are a research organisation in our own right. We are what's known as an independent research organisation, which means that we are able to um, apply for funding from research councils in our own right, not, and we don't necessarily need to go through a, a university. Um, we, I think, I suppose, what the other thing that makes us uh, makes an IRO different is that we don't have research as our main function. Um, obviously, that's not what we do as our core core function. And there are a number of other organisations which were similar to us in that respect. So um, there's a group called the IR, called IRO, uh, the IRO um, Consortium. But there are a number of other cultural um, organisations which uh, don't necessarily have research. Um, as their main um, role. They would like to have a repository, they would like to be more open with their um, publications, but can't necessarily, with the scale of the research that they do, can't necessarily um, justify the resources and the cost involved in um, making their own repository. So we're beginning to talk now <coughs> to a small number of interested organisations about, um, because we're building a repository anyway, to develop it as a shared repository for similar sized um, organisations in terms of research. So very early days, um, we've, one of the things we've done apart from having a scholarly communications expert is that we've been building our um, expertise and experience in the area of repositories and um, repository infrastructure. Um, within the, the newish research services department led by Torsten Reimer. Um, we've managed to uh, 
poach several more uh, experts and people with rep repository experience from higher education. Um, so they're sharing everything that they know and helping us uh, move forward on our repository plans. We've had plenty of expression of interest from um, the pilot organisations. Um, so we firmly got preservation in our mind, but we do need to wait for that DAMPS um, uh, piece of work to be completed before we can think about preservation in any um, formal way for research outputs. But um, we will be going to a tender process very soon in the next few weeks for this um, pilot repository. And um, I am very keen to not only take your questions, but to take your hints and tips on how to go, how to go, how to go about setting up a repository. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Stephen.